The Romulan Star Empire, or Ryansu in the Old Tongue, is an enigmatic and often downplayed organization within the universe of Star Trek. Ironically, for as much as they play a role in inter-quadrant politics, we know very little about them. However, to fully understand if they are the puppet master of all things, or simply idiots, we'll have to dig a little deeper. When it comes to Romulan society, it makes more sense to analyze them based on the specific eras. In the 22nd century, there seemed to be a warrior caste that had its focus on subterfuge. Not wanting to directly confront their adversary, they worked within governments to slowly weaken and morph the organizations into the needs of their superior culture. This mentality would evolve into the classical thinking of soldiers, utilizing cloaking devices to retain an edge, but facing their opponents and engaging in open and warfare in the 23rd century. Defeats to Starfleet would force the Romulans behind their own borders, and when they re-emerged in the 24th century, the Ryansu once again embraced their former lineage as schemers and manipulators. The culture at this point would have an ingrained move-counter-move mentality. It was always a game of chess with them and trying to keep the upper hand, this often by causing conflict between other empires. Interestingly, their technology would generally appear superior in some aspects, but the ships often were glass cannons. The society of the Romulans was broken down into four separate factions, from everything I can tell at least. The top echelons included the Romulan leadership, which was an entity that appeared to have elected officials, but ultimately is controlled by old powerful families. The head of the Romulans acted more as a dictator of sorts, having unlimited control, than that of someone for the people. Romulan authorities utilized the Tal Shiar, which was effectively the secret police of the government. This would keep elements in line to ensure loyalty and prevent the overthrow of the body politic. This, of course, fostered corruption within the government, and there was even corruption within the Tal Shiar itself, but we'll talk about that another time. If the government was the head, certainly the military would be the talons that served under the raptor's wing. Interestingly, while the higher echelons of the military tolerated government and Tal Shiar oversight, most of the armed forces, including its captains, in the 24th century at least, were tired of constant wars and fighting that ultimately caused suffering for the Romulan people. Many were distrustful of the Tal Shiar and actively showed disdain. The last faction that we'll discuss was, well, the civilian populace. Most Romulan citizens do appear to not reflect their government's ideals throughout the various eras. The peoples of Romulus were curious, open to progressive thoughts, and wanted reunification with the Vulcans. They had very little interest in fighting with the Federation generally, though propaganda kept most of them distrustful of the diverse group. Even with this progressive bent, their culture norms did make them appear barbaric by Federation standards, however. As an example, children who were born with ailments like blindness were killed at birth. This would be one of the many draconian policies by the Romulan people. Romulan society, similar to many others, was a mishmash of ideologies of the barbaric to the conservative and even the progressive. Those of the lower and middle rungs, the military, and even some politicians would be held hostage by the elites using tradition to keep everyone in line. On that score, let's discuss the military a bit. People blame the military for the wars that we are asked to fight. But I think it is your kind, Major be the death of us all. While the Romulans were a known presence across at least five Trek series, with two of them being strong antagonists and the three others having the peoples as catalysts, allies, or backdrops, there is evidence that the military, unlike the Tal Shiar, was fairly conservative with elements that revered honor and, while being ready for a fight, had no real interest in an out-and-out -out war. There are always exceptions to the rule, of course, but indeed in the mid to late 23rd century and the 24th century, elements in the Romulan Star Empire knew a Federation war was not worth the price in lives nor resources. But unfortunately, they were being forced to stay aggressive. The strength of Romulan vessels has always been in contention, with ships sometimes seeming to be more powerful and intimidating, yet failing to meet up to such standards in actual combat. I've always had the opinion that Romulan ships were glass cannons that can't take too much damage, but could unload a devastating amount in a short time. A lot of what we see of the Romulan armed forces' ability to defend itself would be mostly based on alternate universes when things go drastically wrong. We see the paths not taken. These alternate universes rarely, if ever, now that I think about it, show the Romulans winning a prolonged battle or war. And ultimately, this would explain why they relied on their intelligence services. So let's get into that. 
Dialogue often leads us to believe that the Romulans always had their hands in interquadrant politics. While there are periods that they did not rely on their intelligence agencies to combat threats to the Star Empire, this is what they're most known for and what they generally used. Ironically, there is evidence of various agencies that worked for the betterment of Romulan kind, even through espionage, but the most well-known is that of the Tal Shiar. Effectively what could be called the secret police, the Tal Shiar often had a member on the Romulan Continuing Committee, one of the highest governing bodies in the land. But ironically, the intelligence operation often didn't even report to any Romulan authority, democratically elected or no, and worked with near impunity. The organization maintained its own fleet and armaments. Due to this, as well as the overarching power and ability to override military command would mean the Tal Shiar was combative with both the army and naval elements within the Romulan armed forces. Tal Shiar agents spread across the major powers, including contacts within the highest echelons of various governments. We could see this throughout the eras, like the Vulcans in the 22nd century and the head of Starfleet security in the 24th. The consortium wouldn't be without its flaws and weaknesses, though. Arguably, the Tal Shiar's ability were far over stated, as organizations like Section 31 and the Dominion outmaneuvered them constantly. However, and again this is arguable, it was all by design. The Tal Shiar was effectively made ineffective to keep other intelligence networks off balance as they focused on the machinations of the Tal Shiar and not something worse. This would allow an entity that was far more powerful to pull the strings of the Tal Shiar and, again, work without being noticed. That's a discussion for another time though. So with that discussed, Let's try to break it down by century. Major impacts by the Romulans would ultimately begin to be felt in the early to mid 22nd century as the Romulan Star Empire largely utilized its intelligence organizations to sow discord. Those who ride under the raptor's wing slowly manipulated events by first reaching out and successfully manipulating the Vulcan High Command. This, maintained as an attempt to bring the Vulcans and Romulans together, would cause a lot of strife within the Quadrant. Overnight, the Vulcans seemingly became overly aggressive and, ironically, a bit unpredictable. Ultimately, the Romulans would fail to take over the Vulcan High Command. This would mean that they would have to adopt a different strategy. Admiral Valdor led a project that was bent on ensuring the various governments of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants wouldn't find peace. The man utilized drone ships with holographic capabilities to make it seem like various vessels of one government were attacking another. While initially successful in nearly setting the Alpha and Beta Quadrant aflame in war, the NX-01 Enterprise, under the command of Captain Archer, realized the deception and united the various factions to fight the threat. Though interestingly, they never found out that the operation was carried out by the Romulans. Ironically, these attempts of the Romulans to divide the Alpha and Beta Quadrants led to them ultimately forming the Federation. The Romulans were strong enough and savvy enough to become a threat, but only to the point of their enemies uniting, in which they would then fail. The failure of the drone project would cause the Romulans to recoil and think out their processes. While there would be a war, the only documented information we have leads into the 23rd century. The mid to late 23rd century saw a very strong Romulan military. Seemingly, the Romulans more focused on force and pure might than that of move-counter-move. -move. While many within the armed forces did not necessarily want to engage the Federation, they were more than able to and could rot a lot of devastation upon Starfleet and other enemies. The Romulans would be a very real threat, though the Federation ultimately was able to outmaneuver them, resulting in the Romulan Star Empire signing a treaty with Starfleet ensuring that the Federation would not utilize cloaking devices and the Romulans would retreat behind their borders. However, the Romulans ensured that there was this image ingrained within Starfleet officers that showed them as manipulative and very powerful. Thanks to Borg incursions, the mid to late 24th century would see a resurgence of the Romulan peoples. Arguably, the mid 24th century was the pinnacle of Romulan strength. As I've noted, while the ships were glass cannons, the Dideradex and even scout vessels could still be formidable. Unlike in the 23rd century, the 24th century Romulan Star Empire returned to its roots with mostly attempting to sabotage and manipulate. However, they would also still attempt to use their fleets to intimidate the Federation and surrounding powers. The Star Empire slowly and methodically began to break down the internal workings of Starfleet, causing a lot of discord. This created a paranoia that would allow powerful figures to begin witch hunts that resulted in the destruction of careers of innocent Starfleet officers. Indeed, these machinations were so successful that the Federation began to doubt its alliance with the Klingons, 
allowing a fracturing of the two. Their might and perceived power was such that, even when it was proven that the Romulans attempted to kill a high-ranking delegate of the Klingons, neither the Klingons nor the Federation would go to war, though their perceived power wouldn't last long. Interestingly, it wouldn't be the Romulan military nor the populace of the Romulans that would spell the decline of the Star Empire. It would be their intelligence agency. The political class became so reliant on the Tal Shiar to enact its will, so when the Tal Shiar failed, that of the Star Empire would fail. We even see this when the Dominion tricked the Tal Shiar. The entity would attempt a genocide and would be ambushed. This created a power vacuum within the Star Empire, and thus they were able to be infested with elements from Starfleet and uh, be pulled into a war due to a lie. The decay would continue as the Dominion War took an extreme toll on them. Ultimately, their inability to rebuild in time would result in the destruction of the Empire when the government wasn't able to save its own people. This due to a catastrophe that destroyed Romulus and other planets. That said, let's analyze their tactics and ultimately their effectiveness. For those who have been with the channel for a while, you know that I like to tease my new videos coming out, and what's been interesting to me is to see the amount of people who are talking about how ineffective and laughable the Romulans, and specifically the Tal Shiar, were. And to be honest, this is only accurate if you consider the end results and not the details or the underlying impacts. While the Ryan Sioux failed during all of the eras, they did have a lasting effect. In the 22nd century, the Romulans caused a ton of internal strife within Alpha and Beta Quadrant powers. They were able to manipulate and control arguably the most powerful government in the region, namely the Vulcans. In the 23rd century, those under the Raptor Wing would be powerful enemies that were feared by Starfleet and others. They would come close to bringing the Federation to war with the Klingons and be able to use their military to push the Federation on its back foot. In the 24th century, the Romulans were so effective that the Federation started to feed on itself, questioning everyone and everything around them. They would talk Klingons, warriors of honor, into betraying their own government and trying to lead them into an alliance. And all of this with the possible exception of a small point in the 23rd century being done when the Romulans were in a position to generally be easily overthrown militarily. At the end of the day, the Romulans were effective about 70% of the time. Unfortunately, it was the 30% that was most critical and caused innumerable damage to the Romulans, and due to that, they were never as great as they could have been. But these are my opinions. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below.